MTD are in Sheffield at Parker Hannafin. Now, James, thanks for having us here today. That's my pleasure. Thanks for coming. James, you've made a massive investment here, um, a complete automated cell. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this investment, please? OK, uh, a little bit of background to the project. Uh, our business is uh, essentially high mix, low volume. Uh, so what we found in our general sort of production environment is we spend a lot of time uh, changing over from part to part. Uh, and <clears throat> basically what we decided to do was try and kill a few birds with one stone. We've got a, you know, a, a sort of aging uh, CNC lathe cell uh, in a different area. Uh, so we thought we'd focus this project on uh, obsoleting all those three machines, moving all the work onto one cell and, and automating it at the same time. Uh, and the Heimbuck equipment has been key to helping us to attack that area uh, where we've seen a lot of waste in setup. Can you tell us a little bit about the cell before we move on to the Heimbuck products, please? Can you yep. tell us about the robot, the machine, the bar feeder, the complete yep. solution, and your thought process that went be behind that kind of complete process. Okay, so we have a lot of variety of products, so we wanted something that was that was flexible um, and that could handle all of the workload that we we're going to put through. Uh, so basically, uh, we went for the, the DMG Mori NLX 2000, so we've got uh, two spindles on there, so essentially we get uh, both operations of, of a turn and turn component done in one setup. Uh, but also we've got milling capability on there as well. What we're aiming for was to get raw material going into the cell and finished component coming out. Because uh, we sort of reasoned that we didn't want product moving around the factory too much. There's a lot of waste there as well. Uh, so just to keep it all in one place, uh, this cell gives us that flexibility. So you're actually uh, automating with bar or billet? Yes. Uh, now what are the kind of materials that you're making the components from? Okay, so a lot of our components are either uh, brass, uh, different variants of brass, or generally stainless steel, uh, 316, 304, um, some nitronic and things so like some that. Some relatively hard materials too. Yeah, so, some quite easy to machine, some quite difficult. Uh, so we went for the machine that, that, that could handle it all, no problems. Now, the work holding system. Now, you can't praise this system enough. Now, tell us about the Heimbuck solution and how it's benefited this cell. Okay, well... Basically, as I said before, you know, we spend a lot of time setting up on the machine, so in order to attack that, we were looking for everything that we could possibly put in the cell to be quick change. Uh, and Heimbuck, you know, really did come up trumps with that. Uh, we were looking at like 10 second collet changes, you know, a couple of minutes to change over from a collet to a jaw module and vice versa. Uh, and when you weigh that against how much time you spend setting a traditional lathe chuck, um, you know, we've seen benefits of up to 80% reduction in setup times. Wow, 80% is, is massive. Now, you're not only just using the collet chucks, you're also using the jaw modules, as you've just mentioned. Yeah. Can you tell me what, what you're using the jaw modules for? Um, you've got some presented on the table behind you. Can you tell our audience what they are and what you're using them for, please? Predominantly, we, we use the jaw modules for the second op, because uh, obviously in the, in the main spindle, uh, it's raw material in there. And in our case, it's usually round or hexagon. Uh, so we can either handle that in billet form and load it in with the robot or have it uh, with a bar feeder. Uh, so the, the second spindle is the one that we use the, the jaw modules on the most. Uh, we have soft jaws mounted on them um, and they're machined to the profile of the, the, the first stop machining basically, so uh, that's the reason why we'll, we'll go so for that. So swapping from collet chuck to jaw module, how long does that take? Uh, approximately two to three minutes. Uh, factoring in, you, you, all you have to do is un unscrew essentially three M8 cap heads, uh, and there's one central bolt that just clamps it in and out, and then once you've taken that off, you know, the collet you know, clips back in in a matter of seconds. So a very modular system. Yeah, yeah, very so flexible. We've, 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 We've covered the, the setup time. It's obviously saved massive uh, amounts of time in setup. But what about the accuracy of parts and the clamping force? Well, we found that the accuracy to be, you know, pretty much spot on and very extremely consistent. Um, so, with regards to clamping force, we've machined components where, uh, for example, we've been machining stainless steel uh, from hexagon. We'll be intermittent cutting, clamping on only three or four millen material on a, you know, a fairly decent sized component. Uh, so, you know, we've got no issues with clamping force at all whatsoever. So how important was work holding um, as a consideration within this project? Well, 
Again, we have a lot of variety in our product, um, so we needed the uh, flexibility of being able to hold raw material and sometimes cast as well. Um, and some of those shapes are quite intricate, uh, so we needed the flexibility um, to be able to, you know, attack all, all components really. So, and Heimbuck again, with the vast amount of product they've got on offer, uh, really helped us to achieve that. So it's safe to say efficiency and producti productivity gains have, have increased due to this setup? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. James, thank you. Very soon, thanks very much.